In this video, we're going to show you how to install spark plugs on your Ford Taurus located underneath your ignition coils. With the hood open, go ahead and locate your ground terminal on your battery. Using a 10 millimeter socket, we're going to loosen this nut right here. Loosen that and pull it off and set it aside. Now that our ground terminal is disconnected, we're going to come over to the back side of the air filter box. You're going to reach down inside and pull these clips off. And we have this hose right here. Now there's a gray retaining clip here. It's almost like a locking clip. You need to push that in and then back and release it. You can hear it clicking. When you release that, pull out. Over here, we have another vacuum hose. Simply going to pull up on this, separate that, tuck that off to the side. And then we have the air intake tube hose clamp. You could use a flathead screwdriver to loosen that. You can also use an eight millimeter socket. Simply gonna loosen that. You don't have to undo the entire hose clamp. I'm gonna grab this whole unit and kind of give it a little wiggle. Wiggle it off of the throttle body. Now when we lift this up, we're gonna take the air filter lid box and we're gonna pull it to the passenger side. And the reason why we're doing that is we have to disengage the three tabs here from the holes in the air filter base. On the top right here, we wanna disconnect this harness. So this little push tab right here. I'm gonna pinch this little tab right here and pull this connector off. Just tuck that off to the side. Now next thing we wanna disconnect is this unit here. Now there's gonna be a little tab right here on the top and there's gonna be one just below it. And what you need to do is pinch these two together and then push the connector or the green connector locking tab towards the passenger side. Now, if you want to, you can use a pocket screwdriver just to go ahead and get in there and pull that. You can feel it release and it just kind of like pops over. And once that's over, go ahead and wiggle this unit and gently pull that off. Now, if you follow this over, it goes into plastic retaining clips. Simply just work that up and off and do that all the way over. Now that we have that lower hose off, we want to transition right to the connector right here. Now there's a red lock safety tab right here. You can use a pocket screwdriver. I'm going to use this here. You can usually use your finger, but you're just going to lift that up to a certain point and it's going to stop. And then there's a tab right here you're going to push in on. Use your thumb and just kind of pinch and pull this off just like so. On the back passenger side of the intake, you're gonna find the map sensor. You're gonna lift up on this little tab and just gently slide that connector off. Now across the front side of our intake, we have a coolant tube here. You have two ways you can do this. You can use a trim tool and pop the plastic retainers out on the two sides here, but that's at risk of breaking the plastic. You can do this here. Use your pocket screwdriver, open up these little tabs and simply roll the hose out. Do that on both sides. That way there, you don't risk breaking the plastic. On the back side of our intake here, there's gonna be another hose, vacuum hose here. Now there are two hose clamps. You can undo either one. What we need to do is basically remove the hose off of the intake. Now our hose clamp here is a little bit tight and we can't get a tool properly on that. So we're gonna try and remove the back one here. Use a pair of pliers or whatever you have that's gonna be able to go ahead and release these tabs. And then we'll go ahead and pull that out. Now, if you chose to do what I did here, remove the metal clamp and pull it back, I'm going to slide that off and put that on my bench. That way it doesn't fall off behind the engine and lose it forever. Our next step is to go just underneath our throttle body here. There is gonna be a 10 millimeter bolt holding the intake to a bracket. We need to go ahead and use our 10 millimeter socket and our quarter inch ratchet, loosen and remove that bolt. Now I am using a stubby quarter inch ratchet. You can use a longer one. You can use a standard size if you want, but the stubby quarter inch ratchet does get more throw on it so you can spin it a little bit easier. Once that bolt gets pretty loose, go ahead and reach in there. Remove, or you're gonna wanna remove your socket and your ratchet and spin that out. This is one of those bolts, if you drop it, it's gone forever. There it is. 
On the back side here, we're gonna use a pair of pliers here to disconnect this. Now our clamp here is kind of twisted and we can't get to that clamp properly. So we can grab this here. And we're gonna try and ro rotate this hose a little bit because we can't gain access to our clamp here. And once you can get access to it, I'm gonna use some pliers. Let's open that up and we're gonna slide that back. And then slide the hose off. Next thing we wanna do is remove the seven eight millimeter bolts holding our intake to the lower intake. I'm gonna go ahead and start over here on the left. These bolts are a capture setup here. So that means that the rubber grommets and everything, they kind of hold it in place here so those studs won't fall out. Let's go ahead and grab our intake, lift that up and slide that up and out. Our next step is to clean and protect our lower intake. I'm gonna start with some spray solvent on a rag. And you wanna wipe the intake here. Make sure that you're wiping any debris away from these ports. We want to keep any debris from falling down inside the engine the best possible way. Once you're satisfied that that lower intake is clean, you can go ahead and take some shop towels or rags. And we want to go ahead and cover or fill those ports a little bit. We want to keep anything from falling down inside, i.e. debris, sockets, anything fun like that that you might end up introducing another problem to that engine later. Now we wanna go ahead and replace these components. You want to notice that on this particular engine, it is a V6. So that means you're gonna have six of each of these components. On the front bank here, you're gonna have one, two, three. On the back side, you have four, five, six. Now right here, you have the electrical harness coming to the coil itself. There's gonna be a lock tab right here, this white unit. You wanna go ahead and gently pull up on this. You can see that it has come up and then you can go ahead and press down on it and pull that harness off. Right here is an eight millimeter bolt. I'm gonna use my socket and my quarter inch ratchet. I'm gonna loosen that. Remove it and set that aside. Don't lose that. I'm gonna be reusing that later on. I wanna go ahead and grab the coil, give it a little twist and pull up and remove that. Now we're gonna use a 16 millimeter spark plug socket and a six inch extension with your ratchet. Now the spark plug socket has a rubber grommet inside to hold and capture the spark plug. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this together. I'm gonna to press it down. And what it does is once you remove that spark plug, cause that plug is way down inside the cylinder, you wanna go ahead and push that on. So it locks it on and then you can remove it. I'm gonna drop this down inside. You can hear it pop on, get that ratchet on there. That spark plug feels like it's quite a bit tighter than it should be. Once it feels like that is pretty loose, pop the ratchet off and you should be able to spin that extension and remove that spark plug. There it is. And there is your spark plug. Now we went ahead and put a little bit of anti-seize compound on the threads here. It's not necessary, but it's something we like to practice here. Now installing the spark plug. If you have the spark plug socket, it's great. You can go ahead and insert this into the rubber grommet and then lower this down and thread it into the engine. Only problem with that, sometimes the rubber grommet, when you pull the socket out, the grommet might come out of the socket and stays on the spark plug. That's a bad thing. That leads us into a tech tip. If you take a simple piece of rubber hose here, it could be a piece of vacuum hose, you can slide this over. There, you have the component here ready to go. You wanna make sure that that does pop on there. And what you wanna do is prevent you from having to drop the spark plug down inside the cylinder. If that bends over the ground strap on the electrode here, what's gonna happen is it's gonna damage a spark plug and you're gonna run into drivability problems. So it's critical that you don't drop that. This is where the hose comes in nice. You can pop that on there, lower this down inside. 
and you can actually just spin that rubber hose to go ahead and get that spark plug started. Once that stops, boop, just pop that hose right off like that. Now you can take a standard 16 millimeter socket or you can push the rubber grommet out of that socket. Be able to drop this down inside. Finish snugging that down. Now let's go ahead and torque that spark plug. Now we want to go ahead and torque this down to 11 foot pounds. Let's go ahead and install our ignition coil. Just snugging those gently, it's gonna be just fine. Press it on and engage your lock. Let's now go ahead and remove our rags from our lower intake. Make sure that that lower intake surface is clean. We already previously cleaned that up. Just give it a quick wipe. Now with your intake flipped over, you wanna go ahead and focus on the gasket itself. Now the gasket itself is here in blue and these are reusable for several times of removing and installing the intake. Now what you're looking for is you wanna make sure that the gasket, if you run your finger over it, is higher than the plastic itself of the intake. You also wanna go ahead and focus on cleaning this. So you go ahead and grab that gasket and pop it out. You can simply pull this out and you can clean out inside the grooves here using some spray solvent or whatever you have. Clean out the track there. Now, if you have to replace the gasket, just remove it, grab the new gasket and install this. But this is critical to the operation. You don't want to end up with an intake vacuum leak. Just simply line that up and press it in. This will secure itself in place. You don't have to use any RTV. Once you're satisfied with the surface being clean in your gasket condition, we can now flip this over and set it in place on top of the engine. Now I wanna go ahead and position this. I'm gonna tuck in the back. Now when you're lowering this down to position, you wanna pay attention to the connectors and the hoses all the way around the perimeter. Take a peek underneath, make sure your gasket is still in place. Then at this point here, you can start threading in the bolts. Now at this point here, you probably already figured out that if you had flipped over that intake, all of these bolts here are capture bolts. So they pretty much stay in place, except for this one here. This is the one that goes on the top center. That's a free floating. And you probably heard that or were able to pull that out earlier. So just pay attention to that. Make sure you start all these by hand. Don't use power tools to get them started. You don't want to cross thread anything, but once you are sure that they're all started, you can go ahead and grab your tool, whatever you want to, and we're going to run these down, but do not tighten them. You just want to bottom them out gently. There is a torque procedure for this here. If you over tighten it, you can crack the intake or cause some other damage. Once you have those secure, go ahead and grab that intake and give it a little wiggle. Our intake is secured and it's level all the way around. If you snug those down and you can still wiggle that intake, well, that tells you that something got stuck underneath. Maybe the gasket fell out. Maybe a connector got stuck or a piece of the wiring harness is underneath. Go ahead and loosen them up, figure out what the problem is, and then go ahead and re-secure everything appropriately. Our next step is to go ahead and torque these bolts here. There is a torque procedure as well as a specific torque spec, which is 89 inch pounds or 7.4 foot pounds for each of these bolts. Now you're gonna go ahead and follow the pattern that we have shown up here on the screen. Let's go ahead and do all seven of these bolts.
Now, if you install a new gasket, it's best if you go around and just double check everything one more time, make sure that your gasket is properly crushed and everything is maintaining its torque spec. With the intake installed, let's go ahead now install all of our components here. I'm gonna start on the back side, install the electrical harness. You're gonna hear and feel that connect. And then install the little plastic button retainer. Following along the front here, we have our rubber hose. Simply gonna press that down into the track there. After we've got our rubber hose clipped in here, it's gonna install the connector here, right on the side of our throttle body. Now installing this here, don't forget, when you press it in and you feel it lock on, press that red lock tab in to secure it. Install the vacuum hose. You're gonna feel that just pretty much bottom out and push the lock, green lock tab in. Secure that into plastic retainers here. And then back over to the throttle body area. Install the electrical connector on the top here. You can hear and feel it engage. Install this vacuum hose on the top here. Now on the back side of the intake, don't forget to install this vacuum hose here. Now when we pull this apart, we had removed the clamp. So you need to go ahead and grab that and slide that over the hose. Let's get to work the plastic hose into the rubber hose and push that in. And then go ahead and grab your pliers, whatever you're gonna be using here. And we just need to get that into position to lock that on. secured. Now the last part of securing our upper intake is this one bolt that goes around underneath our throttle body to that bracket. Reach back there, get that started. I'm going to thread that in as far as I can by hand. I'm going to use my stubby ratchet here with my socket and just reach back there and just snug it down. Snug that down. I do want to make sure that it's pretty tight. You don't want that to vibrate loose. So make sure that's good and tight. Now installing your upper intake box here, make sure that these three tabs interlock into the side portion of our air filter base. Go ahead and push that in. Now we can lower this down, work this down, and get the intake tube onto the throttle body. Once that's in place here, we wanna go ahead and secure our air filter intake box right here. We have the two clips on the side. You're just gonna lift those up and snap them up into place. And then on the side over here, we have this vacuum port. So we're gonna line that up and wanna slide this on. And you're gonna hear this little plastic lock tab engage. There it is. Now up on the top portion here, by the throttle body, we have this rubber hose right here that just needs to press onto this port. There's no clamp there. And then let's go ahead and secure the hose clamp itself. Now when it comes to this here, you wanna make sure that it's snug. You don't wanna over tighten it where you strip the clamp itself. Make sure it's good and snug. Give that a little wiggle, make sure that it's secure. Grab that ground terminal, slide that over. Make sure that's twisted all the way down. Go ahead and snug this down. Now I'm using a hand ratchet. You don't wanna over tighten these here. Using power tools is gonna to be easy to do that. So snug that down and then give that a twist. Make sure that's good and secure. At that point there, you're all set. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.